Good morning to the New Jerusalem family and friends. We greet you in Jesus' joy. We thank God for all of you and pray that all is well with you. For God is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I am Minister Walter White of the New Jerusalem Baptist Church. Our pastor is Dr. Thomas J. Henderson, and our church is located at 1219 Dunbar Oaks Drive, Capitol Heights, Maryland. And we pray that this service will lift your spirits and bring you closer to God and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. After the call of worship, we will have an opening selection by Minister and Deaconess Wyke. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Oh. 
walk with thee, just a ghost, no walk with thee, just a ghost, so walk with thee, let it be, let it be. dear Lord, dear Lord, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is old. Amen. Amen. That should be our desire, a closer walk with Jesus. Thank you, uh, Minister White and Deaconess White. Uh, now I'll be reading scripture. I'll read from Psalm 40, the 40th Psalm, excuse me, the first through the fifth verse. I waited patient for the Lord. Oh, I'm just... okay. Screen just went out, excuse me. I waited patiently for the Lord. Why I keep going? Okay. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Bless is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are the wonderful works which thou hast done. Thy thoughts which are to us work they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and to the hearers of his holy and living word. 
At this time, we will have invocation prayer by Minister Anthony Harris. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Oh, most wise and heavenly Father, we give honor and thanks to you today, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, Father God. We thank you today for touching us with the finger of love and woke us up in our right mind. We thank you, you allow us to see this day for one more day that we can get it right, Father God, that we can get closer to thee, Father God. We just say thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for you letting the sun shine upon us today, Father God. And Father God, we ask you to go with our pastor today as he break the bread of life to us, Father God. Fill him with your spirit today, Father God. Open our hearts and minds that we may receive the word from up high today, Father God. Fill us with your spirit today, Father God. We just can't praise your name enough. For thou art worthy to be praised from sun up to sundown. Thou is worthy of your praises, Father God. And we just say thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, Father God. And Father God, we know that it's going to be our last prayer one day, our last song and our last sermon. Then we're going to go on the other side of the Jordan River, Father God, waiting to see our darling son, Jesus, Father God, who died and shed his blood that we might have the right to the tree of life. We can see him for ourselves, Father God. We can see the nail prints in his hands, Father God. We said, come on home, thou good and faithful servant, Father God. Father God, we keep us and we shall be kept. Bless us and we shall be blessed. All these blessings we ask in your daughter's son's name. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Harris. At this time, we will have our announcements read by Deaconess Dana Green. Following our announcements, our own very loved pastor will come and share his remarks. And following the pastor remarks, we will have lovely Deaconess Dana Green and her lovely daughter, Deaconess Dion Jenkins, sing our song of preparation. Thank you very much in that order. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the joy of Jesus Christ. Our special announcements for this week are Keep in prayer and keep in mind. We ask the Lord that he encamp his angels around our sick, shut in, traveling, bereaved, our young people at home and away, others who may struggle in this time of global crisis. And for Mother Henderson, Sister Williams, Deaconess Birch, White and Blakeney, as well as family, friends, co-workers, the needy, downtrodden, lost, and all others who have said, pray for me. Remember until further notice, we will have Wednesday Bible study prayer service uh, and Sunday morning service 11 a.m. via Zoom on this link. And the meeting ID is 868-236-3959. Please don't forget, next Sunday is our communion service. If you need communion supplies, please see Deaconess Green or White by this coming Wednesday to make arrangements to receive the supplies. Donations, types, offering, etc., can be made online at www.njbcmd.org. Remember also you can give by mail, our church website, and by cash app at dollar sign NJBCMD. And special thanks as always for your love offerings last week. Do you have a November birthday or anniversary? Please let Deaconess Green know as soon as possible so you may be included in the announcements on Fourth Sunday. Please visit and support our church website. Our church web address is www.njbcmd.org. You can join our live Sunday service starting at 11 a.m. at Twitter at New Jerusalem BC, YouTube, and Facebook. Be sure to visit and sign in and direct others to the site in a blessing. Our thought for the week, do you want to live in a godly peace, contentment, and with God-given joy in this life? Do you want to receive the power to overcome the flesh and persevere in a godly manner through all nature of adversity? In John 14, 16, we learn about living and walking in the spirit. When we walk in the spirit and seek the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will remind us of who we are in Christ. 
As such, we find Christ-like and godly solutions to our troubles through Christ's power and strength. For example, when you are wrong, slighted, treated unjustly, do you take your feelings out on the wife, the husband, kids, coworkers, or friends? Too often in this manner, we start a cycle of anger, frustration, and sometimes retaliation. Those whom you unfairly take out your anger, hurt, or disillusionment through a hasty, thoughtless, and unkind word or deed, in turn, may take their feelings out on innocent others. They attack another who attacks another and so on. Where does it end? By the end of the day, there are a lot, there's a lot of anger, grief, pain circling in our world. You can change things by submitting to Christ and the initial prompting of the Holy Spirit to live and speak Christ-like in all things. When you are wrong, don't do what comes naturally, such as a tit-for-tat fleshly rebellion. Stop and take the time to read, believe, and submit to God's will in the words you will find in Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to Ra. It, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. It is better that we do what comes supernaturally as found in 1 Peter 2:23. When Jesus suffered, he did not threaten or strike out. He absorbed the unjust treatment and committed himself to be the ultimate judge who rights all wrongs in his own godly will and way. When we behave in a Christ-like manner, we can be where the cycle of ungodly anger and frustration ends by directing issues to Christ who can and will make it right. Let it go, saints. Give it to God. Trust God, for he will keep his promises. Remember, God loves you, and so do we. Thank you. Thank you. Taking the screen for the reading of our announcements and uh, giving her little sermonette in our thoughts of the week. And she always does so appropriately. And certainly we appreciate it. Uh, the very fine job she does with our bulletin. Last week, if someone had told me I would be feeling well enough to be here with you this morning, I would have had serious doubts about it. I hurt my back uh, trying to lift my wife up off the floor. I was in excruciating pain and didn't know just what I was going to do. I cried out to the Lord, Lord, what are we going to do? Knowing that my wife depends upon me so much to pick her up and help her with things she has to do uh, when the nursing help is not around. And I said, what are we going to do? We, both of us laid up. And lo and behold, uh, I experienced the blessing of having two doctors in the family, my daughter and her husband. And my other daughter, they came over and they nursed me and they uh, worked on me, did uh, many things to uh, to help me along the way. And I still couldn't believe that I would have the kind of recovery that I'm experiencing today. And so I praise God and I've been telling everyone that if I know what my family did for me it was fine and helped me to be at this point that I am this morning, but somebody's been praying for me. And I never doubt the power of prayer. And I never take it for granted. And so uh, whenever someone asks me about my condition, I say, pray for me. Pray that the Lord will restore me. And so many people would tell me, Pastor, I'm praying for you. And when I started to feel so much better so quick, 
I said, somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. And here I am this morning. A testimony. A testament to the fact of God's great healing power. I'm reminded of that song, when I woke this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew the Lord would bring me out. So I got down on my knees, crying, Lord, help me, please. I got up singing and shouting victory. Victory is mine. Thank God. Thank God for being one in the number. Thank God for his great healing power. I want to thank Minister Campbell for picking up the ball and keeping things going and keeping things decently in order. Uh, on last weekend, by God's grace, uh, we already had Minister White scheduled to bring the message as he usually does on fifth Sundays, missionary Sundays. And so thank you, Minister White, amen, for bringing the word of God. Uh, and thank to each and every member of New Jerusalem for all that they did to keep things going. And God honored, honored our faithfulness. God honored our prayers. And here I am this morning. I uh, regretted that on last Sunday, I was scheduled to um, preside over the installation service for the Bethesda Baptist Church new pastor, uh, Pastor Michael Thompson. And I had so been looking forward to it, but uh, that did not happen. But fortunately, uh, presiding, uh, they were able to get someone to take care of that uh, particular uh, assignment uh, pretty readily. And I thank God that it, I wasn't serving in the capacity that would uh, be of any significant consequences. And I've been told that the installation service went very well. The members of Bethesda poured out their love and their new pastor, uh, who is certainly no stranger to him, to them rather. They have known him all their life, all his life. He, his parents were members of the church when he was born. Uh, he has been a member of the church for uh, all those years since he was born. And he has always had a faithful walk uh, during that time. Uh, I often tell people that one of the most impressive things I've observed about their pastor is that he even in his younger days, he remained faithful and he continued steadfastly in the way of the Lord. Unlike many of us who get full of ourselves and wander away from the church, this young man, he was steadfast down through the years. And now uh, he's going to bring that steadfastness and that faith to them as their uh, under shepherd, and I ask that you all will please lift uh, Minister Michael Thompson up in prayer. Uh, he, uh, I think it's been maybe uh, a little more than a year or so now that uh, he lost his mother to COVID, and both his mother and father uh, were. Uh, uh, overcome by the COVID virus a couple of years ago, uh, a little over a year ago, and his mother succumbed to it, and his father has been convalescing almost since that time. But I understand that his father was doing well enough to uh, be able to come out and experience the 
installation of his son as the pastor of the church that he's been a member of, that served as a deacon for, uh, for more years than uh, I can recall. And so uh, it was just a glorious occasion from what I hear. I just read, regret that I wasn't able to be there, be there to experience it, but I'm persuaded that all things work together for good. And so uh, congratulations, Minister Thompson. Uh, keep your hand in God's hand. Keep being faithful and knowing that uh, God says, uh, stows when their journey is over. God has been faithful over a few things. Uh, enter into the joy of thy salvation. He didn't say thou has presided over a big church. He didn't say thou has built the big church. He said, uh, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful, faithful over a few things. Uh, enter into the joy of thy salvation. And so my words of uh, uh, encouragement to Pastor Thompson, be faithful, be faithful, and know that God is faithful morning by morning. With new mercies we see. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto us. Uh, I ask that you continue to pray for me that I will continue on my path of recovery. Pray for my uh, wife, uh, better than 51 years, who as of late has been stricken with health problems that has hindered her from serving the way that she'd like to serve. And I just ask that you will continue to lift her up in prayer. Uh, she's been holding steadfast to the Lord. She's been uh, being unmovable uh, in her commitment to the Lord. And Naturally, she longs to be able to serve in the manner that she was accustomed to serving. Uh, we have a good time with her on a Wednesday Bible study and prayer service when she's able to join in with us on the uh, Zoom connection and they can hear her sing and testify. And though it's sometimes halted and not as uh, we uh, remember her in her uh, healthy days, but uh, the joy she attempts to sing, or serve, or pray. So keep praying for her. Uh, he does not try us more than we can bear. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from them all. And so uh, don't let our circumstances uh, have us to doubt our standing with God. Our standing with God is perfect. Our standing with God is saved to the utmost. Our circumstances, though, is that we have to endure whatever comes with this life in this world. Sometimes uh, trials and tribulations are, are more than uh, we would like to bear, but we can always stand on God's promise that he will not try us more than we can bear without providing a means of escape. What is that means of escape that he talks about? He can heal us with his healing hand, he can provide for us with his providential care, or he could call us home. 
And too often we consider that a negative and forget that uh, this life in this world is not our destination, it's just a journey, just a journey. We're just pilgrims passing through a foreign land on our way to Canaan land, the land of joy, the land of cloudless days, the land of immortality, the land where the wicked shall cease from crumbling, Job says. And uh, every day, Job didn't say it, but every day shall be like Sunday. Sabbath shall have no end. And so we, in spite of our circumstances in, the, in this world, the joy of our standing with God keeps us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Even on our sickbed, we can praise him and give glory to his good and holy name. So thank you. Thank you, saints, for your prayers. Thank you for your love. Uh, and pray for me. Don't pity me because God has already done what he said he would do. I, I, don't, I don't need pity. Uh, I, I've got the promise in the word of God to stand on. And I've got the saints of God to look to for encouragement and help along the way. But uh, as it relates to pity, uh, I, I know I have the victory. I know that it's well with my soul. And so what, what Job said, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Job said that even before Christ died for our sins. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job said, because I know that my Redeemer live. Ah, and uh, though the skin worms may eat of this body, I believe that I shall see him for myself. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded, my sisters and brothers. I want to see God for myself. I want to share this robe of flesh. Therefore, I have victory. I have victory in this life. And certainly, I have victory in the life to come. My wife has victory in this life. And certainly, she has victory in the life to come. Therefore, he, he can, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He'll not try us more than we can bear without providing a means of escape. Whatever that means may be, stand on that promise and know that God is God. He's God all by himself. He makes no mistakes. Didn't mean to take up this much time, uh, but I just, I'm just so thankful to God for bringing this back and allowing me to run on a little while longer as the pastor of New Jerusalem, also to sustain my wife, who's, as we speak, she's listening on, she's looking on, Good morning to you, Sister Henderson. I pray that the service will encourage you here today. She looks forward to joining us uh, during our services each and every Sunday uh, on uh, the last time, week, not last week, but week before last. Uh, after the service, she uh, called those who took part and uh, critiqued them. You did really well with your singing. You did this really well. And it just kind of uh, made me rejoice to know that she was that sharp and that she was that observer and that she could retain and share 
with others, uh, how they glorified God and encouraged him along the way. So uh, let's pray for Sister Henderson and all those who are on our prayer list. Um, uh, Sister Lucretia Blakeney uh, has been going through some struggles lately, both she and our husband Bill. Uh, Sister Vaughn has been having some setbacks and uh, she at last report was recovering real well. That you will please be in prayer for her. Dickiness Jardina White uh, had a uh, accident where she uh, injured her back, uh, and she is such a faithful servant. She almost never even shared with anyone that she had hurt her back. She just kept on keeping on, in spite of her circumstances and serve silently in the background. Sister White, we're praying for you and uh, keep trusting God will restore you in due time. Um, I, 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 I guess I can say at this point, she's almost pretty much back to doing the things that she has been doing. And if not, she's well on her way. Um, that's uh, all I have in the way of immediate announcements. I do want to say that I was, uh, I am aware of the tragic accident that happened in Houston, Texas at Astro World on yesterday, uh, where uh, some 50,000 people attended a musical concert and uh, Confusion broke out and uh, they began to stampede for lack of a better word. And it's a dangerous thing, uh, experiencing people stampeding. You've seen uh, animals stampede and nobody, well, I found that when people stampede, it's just as bad. And so, uh, I said people were rushing in a uh, performance stage, and in the process, eight people, eight people were trampled to death, including 14 year old and a 16 year old. Uh, I, my heart goes out to the family, uh, those who uh, lost their lives in that tragic accident. and. Uh, I said to myself, my, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get 50,000 people to attend a Christian service and get so excited that they just rushed, they rushed, put, rushed the podium. I believe God will sustain them all. But unfortunately, it was not that way in this case. So let's uh, be in prayer those families, particularly a family, those one 14 year old and one 16 year old that was uh, killed in the incident. Let's uh, uh, ask God's healing power upon those families and uh, that they will uh, restore them uh, and uh, or rather comfort them during their bereavement. And no one can better, uh, better witness to people about finding comfort, comfort in the face of death than Christians who know, who know that there is an escape from death through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And to know that death is nothing but a doorway to eternity, eternal uh, bliss and the presence of God, or eternal damnation to those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So, uh, enough uh, has been said. I'm going to, at this time, uh, decrease, for lack of a better word, 
and look to our uh, very faithful sister Dana Green, who always is available and ready to serve in so many different capacities. Uh, and she and her very uh, faithful daughter, uh, new mommy, a little over a year now, celebrated her only child birthday to come and join in the hymn of preparation. Amen. Good morning again. Thank you, Pastor, for those encouraging words. And it just lets us know good times, bad times. We're going to serve the Lord. And Psalms 95, 6 and 7 says, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. And therefore, we want to praise him at all times. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Glory, glory in all things, give him glory. Jesus, Blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. God is our rock, hope of salvation, a strong deliverer. In him I'll always trust. Come on, let's praise him. Why don't you praise him? Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. God is our rock, hope of salvation, a strong deliverer. In him I'll always trust. Come on, let's praise him. Why don't you praise him? Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior. Jesus, blessed Savior. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Amen. God bless. Thank you, thanks. Thank you, Sister Dana. Thank you, Sister Dion. Scripture says if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. He's worthy. God is going to give his son who died for all his sins. He's going to praise him in one way or another. And so uh, we praise and thank God for allowing us to be here for another service on this Lord's Day. They set aside worship and praise the one and only true God, maker, the creator, all mankind in him do we move and have our existence. And so 
We are thankful unto God. Praise Him for this another day. Uh, this morning, I'm going to share with you from uh, the book of Acts. Acts, the fourth chapter. And those of you who have your Bible and you wish to turn along and uh, read with us, we're going to be reading from Acts chapter four. And uh, we will be reading starting at the 13th verse and reading down through verse 22. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with him, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a noble miracle have been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. Because of the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown. May God bless both the reader and the hearers of his holy word. May it edify our walk in Christ Jesus. This morning, I want to focus our attention on the 19th verse which I'll read again for the hearing. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. And from that verse, let's, Consider the thought, I will obey God. I will obey God. Who would have ever thought that uh, we would be in this position here in America, having to decide whether we're going to obey man or to obey, obey God. America, the land uh, that was established on Christian principles. America, that uh, the, the passages on the Mayflower 
were trying to escape religious persecution came to America, desiring to serve God in sincerity and in truth, and to escape the tyranny of government, demanded them to do things contrary to the will of God. Rather than to do that, they were willing to go to a land, a land which they knew not of. Go to a land, uh, believing that God would be pleased with their actions and that he would prosper them. And uh, there they landed at Plymouth Rock. And there began the foundation and the establishment of the country that we today consider one of the uh, world leaders. And much of that progress and power that we have uh, been blessed with by God down through the years was founded on the belief of those passengers on the Mayflower, uh, uh, that they were seeking to serve God. They want to obey God rather than to obey man. And uh, as they began to establish themselves here in America, uh, striving to share the word of God with as many as they could. God bless America above and abundantly more than they could have ever asked or think. And mostly based upon the faith and the prayers of those who sail through dangerous seas incurred dangerous circumstances, seeking to serve the true and the living God. But uh, as uh, the scripture says, there arose one in Egypt who knew not Joseph. Well, there has arisen the people in America who knew not the intentions of the passengers on the Mayflower, who knew not uh, the intentions of those who uh, established our constitution, one nation under God, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Uh, they knew not that one day they were going to try and to take out the one nation under God and just say one nation indivisible because they knew that they were not serving God in the manner that the passengers on the Mayflower intended. They knew that uh, they were not serving in the manner that those who established our currency and they so trusted God that they had engraved on all of our currency in God we trust. And so down through the years, we have been standing on the prayers and the blessings and the faithfulness of those who have uh, put their trust in God and founded our nation based on Christian principles. But somewhere along the way, we have been blinded by our prosperity. Somewhere along the way, 
we have been blinded by our uh, progress in technology, progress in science, our progress in uh, being uh, inventors and, and uh, leading uh, in so many different ways. And we got so blinded that we uh, persuaded ourselves that this progress was not due to the knowledge that God endowed to us. We persuaded ourselves that this progress uh, was of our own doing uh, because uh, we were smarter than other countries of the world. And we were more advanced than other countries of the world. Really? You came over here on the Mayflower? Those who were trying to obey and serve God, now you have forgotten that your blessings are more because of God's mercy and his grace are less because of God's mercy and his grace and more because of your own doings. You dare, and certainly many of us have gotten to that point, dare say that I picked myself up by my own bootstraps. And if you wanna receive the, the piece of American pie, all you got to do is just work hard and uh, you work hard, you make a lot of money, invest in the stock market and whatever it may be. That's the way you have success in America. Somewhere along the way, they forgot God. And that's one of the great tragedies that we are enduring in America today. Who would have ever thought? It's gotten to the point, my sisters and brothers, that our decision to obey God or to obey man could have serious consequences. In other words, you don't do what I tell you to do, we'll put you in jail. Even though uh, the laws that we enact, even though the statutes that we put forth are contrary to the will and the word of God read somewhere that the if any statute or law contradicts the word of God that it's unenforceable my goodness what a wonderful principle or country to be established on any statute you make, Supreme Court, any statute you make, the uh, legal system, if it's contrary to the word of God, it's unenforceable. They recognize that it was unfruitful, that it was uh, 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 pointless, that it was uh, never going to result in anything good to establish laws that were contrary to the word of God. 
That's the predicament we find ourselves here in today, here in America, who started out on the right track, but we're caught into this circumstances so so much uh, uh, that often out of fear of the consequences, we choose to obey man, knowing well that it's contrary to the will of God. Well, yeah, I know it's wrong and contrary to the will of God. That's what the that's what the law says. And uh, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to have to uh, endure any unjust punishment as a result of disobeying the laws of man. And it seems that the more we go along with the program of man's law, though we know they're contrary to the will of God, more we just let it slide and remain silent on the issue, the more we are confronted with other issues that, that bring us further and further away from the will of God. In my own lifetime, I have seen how uh, gambling, which in my younger days was considered illegal and taboo, has become uh, more and more prevalent. It, it, it was, uh, along the way legalized, many fought against it, but uh, were not able to fail, prevail. And now gambling is illegal from shore, or, or is legal rather, from shore to shore. And I don't know if you've been noticing, but on television, Almost every other commercial here in this area is advertising legal gambling, luring people more and more into that vice. Uh, what's the vice about it, preacher? Just opportunity to make money. Well, why do you think America initially would not allow uh, gambling to be legal because our founding fathers knew that gambling would lead to problems contrary to the will of God, that gambling would <clears throat> encourage us more to put our trust in money. We gamble because we're trying to get rich quick. We gamble because we love money. And the word of God says the love of money is the root of all evil. And the more we uh, uh, gamble because we love money, the more problems we find ourselves in. And if you look at the statistics in every area in America where gambling is prevalent, the social and moral problems are off the chart. Divorce is higher than anyone else. Suicide is higher than anyone else. All those things that are, are, are contrary to the will of God and the consequences of not obeying God is prevalent in those areas where they have embraced things that are contrary to the will of God. And why? Why? Because the government legalized gambling. I know it's contrary to the word of God, but the government legalized. Government has legalized a whole lot of things that are contrary to the will of God. Who are we going to obey? Shall we obey God? Or shall we obey man? 
forgetting that God and morality are inseparable. That's why England has this condition on their laws that any law that is contrary to the will of God is unenforceable because it's amoral if it's contrary to the will of God. God and morality are inseparable. And whether uh, a man legalizes it or not, and usually it's legalized by man because man is trying to please the will of the people which more often than not is to serve their own selfish need, their own selfish pride. Uh, they're able to institute gambling and other immoral things because that's what the people want. The number of people who want to do things that are immoral are increasing because the number of people who are uh, or, or stopping going to church, the number of people who are stopping uh, trusting in God, or outnumbering the people who are trusting in God. Because we live in a democracy, in a democracy, those who lead us, call themselves the government, lead us based on uh, who can give us the most votes. And embracing those things that are immoral will get us elected. Whether we agree that it's according to the will of God or not, it's going to get us elected. It's going to put us in power. Even though in many cases, uh, those who, who, who proclaim it uh, uh, don't go along with it themselves. They just know that if I, 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 I make this my platform, I'm going to get the votes that I need to follow after God. And so uh, that's the circumstances we find ourselves in, in what we call a democracy. Democracy and can be good if the majority of the people desire good. Democracy can be a tragedy if we make our foundation based on those things contrary to the will of God. And though God uh, approves of a democratic system, when that democratic system or that democracy overrules theocracy, the will of God, then uh, that democracy has gone awry. That democracy uh, will lead us down a darksome path. We continue to thumb our nose at God, my sisters and brothers, if we continue to enact laws that are contrary to the will of God, if we continue to embrace immorality, and we are embracing it to the extent that if it's the law, it is not only affecting the general public, it is coming into God's church. When did our churches get so untheocratic and become so democratic that they would place the will of man over the will of God. And so those immoral things that we as Christians should be leaders in and directing the people towards God and away from sin, we are embracing in our churches. 
because it is the law of the land. It is what the people want. And we would even let come out of our mouth if we don't embrace those things that are legal, then the people are not going to come to our church. So a lot of them not realizing, yes, it's making a lot of people come to our church. But what is happening to our churches is that our churches, instead of becoming healing stations for the soul, our churches have become places where uh, folks come on Sunday morning and feel right at home, feel like uh, there's no constraints on them. They don't have to feel sorry for their sins. They don't have to be sorry for our wrongdoing because God loves us. Uh, and the preachers don't preach anything that make us shame of our sins. The preacher don't preach it about anything that reminds us that God is not pleased with our action, uh, especially if it's been legalized. And so we are confronted with the question, my sisters and brothers, whom shall we obey? Shall we obey the law of God? Or shall we obey the law of man? And democracy is contrary to theocracy, the law of God. Then we are on a path of destruction. And that is what is happening in America today. Not one nation unto God, as our preamble of the Constitution says. Not in God we trust, as the is indicated on our currency. Instead of drawing closer to that kind of praising and acknowledging God. We are moving further in the direction of dropping God out of everything that we do. They, they, they eased into our schools and uh, they took prayer out of our schools. Our children were being brought up with the Christian foundation because the very schools that they were attending would start their days in a manner that was pleasing in the sight of God with prayer. And somewhere along the way, uh, someone said, uh-uh, separation of church and state, we can't allow them to bring uh, prayer in the school. We can't allow them to come in the schools praying that, 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 and, and then praying in the name of Jesus, you're going to offend so many people. All those people who don't believe in Jesus, you know how many people they got that don't believe in Jesus? We can't be doing that and offending people. But God, but God, but God in his word, indicated that whenever we pray, if we pray in the name of Jesus, if we ask anything in the name of thy darling son, Jesus, that he will not withhold it from us. And any other prayer is just empty, vain words. And I can say unequivocally that it's empty, vain words because there's only begotten son Jesus says that no man cometh to the father but by me. And so if you haven't embraced Jesus, you don't even know who God is to pray to. 
And yet, we, America, that was standing on a firm foundation, is chipping away, taking prayer out of schools. And if you're going to pray in the public, you cannot pray in the name of Jesus. I'm going to offend people. And that's not the democratic thing to do. Pray and hurt other people feel it. But what about God? How, 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 how disappointed God must be in his people that they would give his praise to someone else. God alone is the maker and the creator of all mankind. And you, 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 you've gotten so full of yourselves. You've gotten so intelligent. Intelligence of man. You, we can better understand now why God says the intelligence of man is but foolishness in the sight of God. Isn't it interesting that when we are struggling, we have no problems embracing God and, oh, God, I need you. Oh, God, have mercy upon me. But when we think that we in control, when we think that we are the leading nation in the world, only we people need God. Trusting in God is a sign of weakness. Look at those people who go to church. They're just people who don't know how to make it. They don't know how to claim their American dream. They're just weak. Not realizing, not realizing that to put your trust in things is not an indication that you're strong. Put your trust in things uh, certainly is not going to get you into heaven. But does it profit a man, the scripture says, if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul. So here we have Peter and John from the very beginning being threatened, telling them, preach no more, speak no more in this name. Huh. Why? Because you spoke in that name and a man was healed. But preach no more in this name. Teach no more in this name. Why? Because you preached in that name and, and, and you said to them, silver and gold have I none. <laughs> but such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up. Rise up and walk. Scripture said that the 40-year-old man got up leaping. 40-year-old man who had never walked in his life had been lame from his breath. He got up leaping and running. 40-year-old man who had been sitting at the gates of the temple every day asking alms. As many beggars do, they find a place where they know that uh, people's conscience are going to bother them uh, if they don't uh, give you something. And so uh, at the sit at the gate of the temple as they go into church and, and I ask them for help, they got to give me something to go into the church and they know God wants you to help people. 
Peter and John comes along. Silver and gold have I none. Ah. Oh, but I got something so much better. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And though his body was healed, the healing of his body was nothing in comparison to the healing of his soul. Silver and gold have I none. Silver and gold cannot get me into heaven. Trust in the Lord and do good in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Silver and gold cannot get us into heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shall be saved. And so, my sisters and brothers, here we have Peter and John. Asking the government, who shall we obey? Shall we obey God? Or shall we obey man? They don't want a government based on the word of God. Because they are a democracy. And the majority of the voters would rather do it their way rather than God's way. And our Christians in America have gotten so weak that they will not speak out when uh, we have government leaders that are uh, immoral to the nth degree. They will not speak out. We have government leaders who who do wrong and they brush it to the side. Oh, I know he did wrong, but we, we can't judge him for that. Look at how the stock market is doing. Look at all the benefits that we are getting from his leadership. Look how good the economy is doing. So, so, so we just, we do, we, we, we're not going to bother that man. I, I know uh, we, all of us, all of us got a little wrong in our life, but as long as he's keeping the economy doing well, we're going to have a blind eye. All the other stuff that's going on in his life. We're going to have a blind eye. All uh, the lies that he's telling us. We're going to have a blind eye to his pride that leads him uh, to do things contrary to the will of God. We're gonna have a blind eye. Because what? Because we love money more than we love God. Therefore, we are in a situation where the majority of the people willing to do things man's way than to do things God's way. Forgetting that the word of God says that if any man will come after me and turn back, it's like a dog turning back to his own vomit. If any man will follow after me and turn back, he's not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. And so we find ourselves willing to enjoy uh, the pleasures of sin for a season at the cost of eternal hell and damnation. The pleasures of sin for a season, wealth and happiness for a season, wealth and happiness uh, uh, for as long as life is in this world. What does it profit a man? What is life 
in this world, but three score and 10. And if by reason of health, four score, and you're willing to put all your trust in the joy of this life in this world and in, in, in the little bit of time that we're going to spend in this body and risk, not risk, but sacrifice the consequences of sin. God says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We as Christians, my sisters and brothers, don't have an option on who we will obey. And Praise God, that's a good thing. It may sometimes result in unjust persecution, but rejoice for the Bible says, blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The apostle Paul calls them Light affliction, the persecutions that we endure. First of all, is there but light afflictions compared to the eternal weight of glory? Hallelujah. These persecutions but, are but light afflictions compared to the eternal weight of glory, which is in store for us in Christ Jesus. The psalmist reminds us that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them from them all. And so I encourage you this morning, my sisters and brothers, don't get discouraged in face of persecution. Don't get discouraged in the face of these light afflictions. I, I, I'm, I find myself reminding people these days, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God has done. Count your many blessings. And uh, you will find yourself rejoicing in the goodness of the Lord. Woke me up this morning. Ha! Had no more back pain. Woke me up this morning. I was able to run a little while longer, woke me up this morning and he, he kept me all night while thieves were breaking in and fires were breaking out. He kept me while I was in a state of slumber, uh, 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 not knowing what was going on in this world, but God, I could rest at ease because I knew that God was in control. I knew that my heavenly father was watching over me. I had forgotten that the time was going to change this morning. Uh, uh, but uh, even with the time changing, he woke me up right on time. He didn't wake me up. Fixed it for me. And I woke up and was able to be right on time. Even with the change of time, I, 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 was, I was getting ready and I looked up at one of my clocks uh, that said 9.30 and I, I, I said to myself, oh Lord, did I oversleep? No, I didn't oversleep. <laughs> he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. And, and I said, Oh, he reminded me that the time had changed this morning and he woke me up right on time, allowed me to enjoy that additional hours sleep and woke me up right on time. I tell you, God is a good God. And I wouldn't serve any other God. I had food uh, to eat. I had 
clothes to wear. I had heat. I had a roof over my head. I, I lacked nothing in this life. I didn't have uh, an abundance of things, but uh, uh, I, 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 I'm reminded of the woman with the meal barrel, uh, and she was getting ready to eat her last meal because the meal barrel was down to just one more meal. And, and God says, just put your trust in me and take some of that uh, meal and give it to Elijah. And what a faith decision she had to make. Uh, she obeyed God. She gave uh, some of that uh, meal in the meal barrel to Elijah, who uh, God had sent him to this woman with her last day of meal. Say, Elijah, I'm going to show you what faith can do. And, 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 and she gave Elijah something to eat. And then when she went back, uh, there was still enough for she and her son who uh, they were going to eat their last meal and lie down and die. And the scripture says every day she didn't have a full barrel of meal. Every day she didn't have uh, more than she needs. She had just enough. And I'm telling you, my sisters and brothers, if you got enough for another day, God has kept his promise. He didn't tell you he was going to uh, bless you like the man who's ground bought for plenty. And he said, what shall I do? I have much good stored up uh, for many days. He says, I'm going to pull down my old barns. I'm going to build greater barns. And there will I bestow all my goods. I have enough for the rest of my life. There I will bestow all of my goods. And I, I have it made. And I'm going to say, so take thine ease by much good stored up for many years. So what if you got much good stored up for many years? Who said you're going to live to see tomorrow? And that's just the lesson that God gave to him. He said, thou fool, this night thy soul is required of thee then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Looking up at my computer and I see that we possibly having some system problems. And so I'm gonna to hasten to a close here and I'm gonna claim victory and say that God is gonna keep us going as long as necessary. But sisters and brothers, there are more people than we can ever realize who want to hear that there is a God he, and that he loves us and he's in control. We have this message in these earthen vessels. And as Jesus has proclaimed to his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Go ye, my sisters and brothers, into the highways and the byways. Don't let anyone dissuade you from lifting up the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. At the name of Jesus, the word of God says there's no other name given among men by which we shall be saved. Therefore, I'm going to obey God. I don't know about you, but I'm going to obey God. I want to hear him say, well, then I get in faithful servant. You were in faithful over a few things. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to preach the word. I'm going to be instant in season and out of season. Whenever I have the opportunity, regardless of how I feel, uh, regardless of uh, what the circumstances may be, I'm going to at every opportunity, proclaim Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. There are so many people, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Few, my sisters and brothers, lift up the name of Jesus. And if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Fear no man, my sisters and brothers, 
But the scripture says that there is torment. And he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Peter well knew his answer to the question. It was not directed at himself, but to those who dare to disobey God and commanded that others do the same. In the words of the Apostle Paul, as I bring it to a close, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Perplexed about how so many people are turning their back on God, but I'm not gonna get distressed. Uh, uh, though no one joins me still, I will follow. Persecuted, but not forsaken. I, I, I fall down, but I get up. Uh, uh, I, I have trials and tribulations, but God sees me through them all. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal bodies. This is the light of mine. Yeah, my mortal body. Uh, uh, and and, and as, as they, they, they said about Peter and John in the beginning, they said, uh, they're ignorant, unlearned, but I have uh, 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 recognized, I have uh, come to the knowledge that they've been with Jesus. And, and praise God, when, when you have the boldness, when you have the testimony that comes from knowing Jesus, you'll get people attention. When you have the word of God in this earthen vessel and you speak forth the word of God, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of God has its inherent power in the boldness. The power doesn't come from you. It comes from the word of God and the word of God shall not return unto him void. Believe on the Lord Jesus. Thou shall be saved. I have decided, my sisters and brothers, to follow Jesus. Jesus, 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 just Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noon time. Jesus all day long. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, my sisters and brothers. I'm going to obey God. And I pray that I've said something to encourage you also to put your trust in and obey God. This time we're going to open the doors of the church. Maybe someone has been encouraged to reunite with the church family, the Christian family. If someone has been convicted to do things God's way, convicted to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And if there's one, we're gonna pray this prayer on your behalf. Father God, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, we come asking you, Father God, that you will Forgive me of my sins. Lord, I acknowledge I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that you gave your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. And I receive it, Father God. I receive that gift of eternal life. You said in your word, who shall believe on my son Jesus? shall be saved. Lord, I don't want to be lost. I, I've, try, I've tried life in this world and I, it has failed me, Father God. I've tried life in this world and each time it led only to grief and woe. 
Lord, I don't want to be lost. Save me, Father God, from this untoward generation. Father God, this is your servant's prayer on the behalf of sinners reaching out. Lord, if they've been praying with me, may they know that you're not slack on your word. And if they confess with their mouth, believe in their heart, the Lord Jesus, they shall be saved. Not maybe they're going to be saved. They shall be saved. Not they will be saved, but they shall be saved. This, Father God, is our servant's prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Thank you, my sisters and brothers. At this time, uh, we're going to uh, have our altar prayer for those who stand in the need of prayer and claim the Lessons of God's word, playing the power of God's word, and subject ourselves, submit ourselves in humble obedience to God. Come boldly before the throne of grace and mercy, he says, where we shall find help in a time of need. Most holy and all wise God, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the songwriter says, come ye disconsolate, wherever you are, wherever you languish. Come to the mercy seat and fervently near. Here, bring your wounded hearts. Here, tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Hear our prayers, O Lord. We come in obedience to thy word, claiming the promises of thy word. Search our hearts, Father God, if there be anything that's hindering us from receiving the joy of your word, living like Christians, hindering us from receiving the blessings of your word, living like Christians, Psalmist said, David says, creating us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us. Give us, Father God, a do right mind. Forgive us, Lord, our shortcomings. Strengthen us where we are weak. Build us up, Lord, where we are torn down. Help us to let our light shine in this dying and sinful world. Though no one join us, help us to let our light shine in this dying and sinful world. Though we be rejected and despised and persecuted, may we let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify thy Father which is in heaven. And as uh, they glorified God because they didn't, could not deny the power of God that was displayed by Peter and John. May we let our light shine. That they who hear thy word glorify them because they cannot, despise, they cannot deny the power of your word. They can look at Pastor Henderson and say, that's Pastor Henderson. I know Pastor Henderson had that kind of... Uh, 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 courage and boldness in it. Pastor Henderson, I can't believe. Pastor Henderson doesn't have that kind of boldness and, and courage in him. It comes from God. It's the power of God within me. And you can have it too if you stand on the word of God. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Quicken our spirits. Quicken our bodies. Quicken our minds. May we not yield to the way of this world. It seems to be heading more and more in the opposite direction here in America. What our founding fathers 
the pilgrims who landed on Plymouth Rock, that they moved further and further away from the trust and the doctrine of the God that they were serving. May we double, double our commitment. May we be found faithful, Lord, in spite of those around us. Let our light shine. This, Father God, is thy servant's prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Thank you, my sisters and brothers. I pray that I have not wearied you in any way with proclaiming the word of God. And I know if I worried you anyway, it wasn't because of the word of God that worried you. May it may have been because of some of my inadequacies in delivering in a manner that I should. I pray that you've been strengthened in some way. I pray that you have been encouraged in some way to continue to run with patience this race to continue to let this dying and sinful world know that Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Follow me, my sisters and brothers. Follow me, I say, as I follow Christ Jesus. Pray for my strength to ever walk in the way and to not put myself in the position of those pastors that will lead God's sheep astray. Because I don't want to have to endure the words that say, woe unto the pastors who lead my sheep astray. I want to hear him say, well done. Pray for me. I'll pray for you, my sisters and brothers. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. That all the saints of God say, Amen. Thank you, my brothers and my sisters, my Christian friends, those of you who have joined us. Uh, on the internet and online services. Uh, come and join us again on next week and uh, strengthen us, help us in our commitment to lifting up the name of Jesus. Uh, join our Bible study that we have on Wednesday nights uh, through uh, our Zoom session that we have and uh, if you go to our website, you'll be able to find what that connection is. We would love to have you join us. Uh, learn more about the word of God and obedience to the word of God. Set it to show thyself a workman approved unto God and needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. I ask once again that you will continue to pray for our strength and the strength of Christians all over the world. Pray for suffering Christians. Pray for God's people, national Israel, uh, that he will keep them. We pray for God's uh, people, Israel, who haven't acknowledged and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they will be able to reach their brothers. Pray that God will prosper them in their way. May each one reach one till all be saved. Pray that we Gentile Christians will too, that our light shines, that each one may reach one. I believe that each one reach one. My goodness. We could reach all the world with the message of Jesus Christ in no time. God bless you. God keep you. 
I love you. God loves you more. Till we meet again. This is God's service, Thomas, saying goodbye.